Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Google Hangout. We're going to talk nursing, and we have a group of panelists here who are ready to talk nursing. But before we get started, you can ask all of your questions in the, uh, well, actually, right underneath the chat room window in that little box. Um, please have your questions ready. Start typing away and send them over, and we will answer those live. Uh, if not, you can use Twitter. Go out there. Our handle is at ufinley. And please use the hashtag AskUF. So tonight, we are going to talk about nursing. We are going to do an overview of the program. We are going to talk about the direct admit aspect of the program. We are also going to talk about what to expect starting out in this program and the hands-on activities as well. So let's, let's get right to it. Guys, please introduce yourself. <laughs> um, I'm Dr. Marjorie Walker, and I'm a chair of the nursing program at University of Finley. I'm Cody Tal, I'm a freshman at the University of Finley, and I am applying for the nursing program this next January. I'm Kate Murphy. I am a sophomore nursing student. I'm almost in the program, hopefully. Um, yeah. Good deal. So, the nursing program. Why did you guys choose the nursing program? Sure. Okay. Um, I chose nursing because I wanted to be able to do something healthcare related because I'm fascinated by all the crazy gross stuff that our body does. Um, <laughs> and I wanted to be able to work with any different kind of population. I'm personally really interested in pediatrics right now, but we're starting clinicals our first round in the spring. So maybe that'll change by the time I graduate. Um, but I just wanted lots of options. Yeah, the reason I went into nursing was uh, because I was looking to the medical field to begin with. Um, and my original dream was to go to be a surgeon or, you know, the, the highest dream. But I thought I need to start somewhere simple. And even though nursing, um, I mean, it's a very good profession, very uh, high end profession. Um, I wanted to start there um, just in case if I ever wanted to stop, I had a good solid job to go with. Um, and if I wanted to go on to be a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant, I had the opportunity to do so. All right. So we, so now we know why. Mm -hmm. So why did you guys choose Finley? Yeah. I guess I'll start this okay. time. <laughs> uh, well, I'm actually from Finley. Um, so it's a pretty easy uh, living situation. I live about 15 minutes um, from the university um, with my family. And uh, they offer a merit scholarship, which was uh, very nice with my ACT score and grade point average. I was able to get um, about half my tuition paid for by his merit scholarship, which was very, very nice. Always a good thing. Yes. <laughs> I'm a little different. I'm from Michigan, so I'm a trader, and I came to Ohio. Um, hey. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I went in toward probably 10 schools when I was in high school, between like junior and senior year. Um, and all the schools in Michigan were really nice and great, but I fell in love with how close-knit Finley's campus is, how small the classes are, how friendly everybody is, everybody knows everybody pretty much. Um, and I just like really liked the atmosphere, and I knew that even though I was going to move away from home and not be real close to my family, I wouldn't feel super homesick because this really does feel like a home, as cliche as that sounds. Yeah. 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 All, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's go a little broader. Let's let's actually talk about the, the program kind of in a nutshell. Let's do a, just an overview of the nursing program. Well, I'll probably give you more detail than you would like. So, um, <laughs> and it's hard for me not to do that. So an overview of the program is like it's 124 credit hours. I think people would like to know the credit hours involved in it. And there's um let me see, there's 865 clinical hours in which every student nurse will go to, and about 150 campus lab. Total, just for the nursing courses, there's almost 1,600 hours. So you have general support courses, sciences, and math, and then this nursing courses will house fundamentals, physical assessment, um, 
OB, pediatrics, med surge, two semesters of med surge, because med surge is still the primary component in regards to the national licensing exam. Uh, it plays the majority part. And then you have community health, mental health, and then we have what we would refer to as a nursing synthesis course, which you will do 225 clinical hours during that when you are precepted with um, a, a working RN. So you actually mirror their schedule. It's as close to clinical practice as you can get um, and still be in school. And then of course we have a capstone course, which is a final um, nursing course, which is preparing you to set for NCLEX exam. And then also folded in there is, of course, research. There's a lot within the nursing curriculums. I'd lie to you if I was telling you there wasn't. <laughs> um, there is a lot. The courses, I would say, are rigorous. There's introductory courses, which uh, Caitlin's been through, mm -hmm. uh, the introductory course. So um, to me, the nursing is a field to go into, actually. I've been a nurse for a long time, and it's an awesome profession. Awesome. And you guys agree? Yeah, yeah. it's very, very uh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm pretty amazed at uh, the experience that Finley offers with um, with all the clinicals, mm -hmm. um, that you're basically a nurse while you're learning to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's um, true. And that's very cool. I'm excited. I'm super excited. It's a really hands-on profession, yeah. and we're, we have um, high fidelity mannequins. So what does that mean? So a high fidelity mannequin is a mannequin that does everything but walk, actually. Um, and my background is really critical care, trauma, life light, uh, cath lab. So those are the areas I come from. So this mannequin has, and we actually have him already, but he's not mm -hmm. set up yet. That's why you're not in there. <laughs> we have him in a box, but he's not ready. Uh, he has every cardiac dysrhythmia known to man, which is great. Um, he can breathe, you could collapse one lung, he has pulses, uh, he can talk to you, say get away. So <laughs> it's it's really the thing is so excited for you it. can practice yeah. on the mannequin yeah, without awesome. <laughs> worrying about harming somebody. So you can go in and we can set this scene up and the student goes in to assess this patient and we're going to see what has the student learned from the lecture, the class portion? Does you, do you really recognize the fact you're going to elevate their head, put oxygen on them, listen to the breath sounds? So it's really a nice um, area in which you practice prior to actually going out and practicing on live patients. <laughs> so that's good. That's fun. That's really mm -hmm. cool. We yeah. have baby that's... too. Are we um, getting the pregnancy one? Well, I'm working on noel which is a pregnant mannequin yes. who actually delivers um, so and i believe i'll probably have her by next year before guys. we go into ob pediatrics so wow, cool. guys listen that makes me so excited <laughs> wow. so those watching this will actually be able to experience and work on that mannequin right yep. yeah now noel actually come. delivers yep. the baby but you know we can baby can have distress and mother can have distress as, that, as well but when you're in a basic BSN program, you're not a specialist. You really graduate as a generalist, which means you have broad spectrum experience across the major areas in which nursing practices. Cool. That's exciting. I got really That's excited exciting. there. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that was real. We just talked about it yeah, in class. We did. Oh, cool. So. No, it is coming. And actually, baby, baby, because you know, some students have never held a baby, you realize. And oh. you're going to go into newborns. Have you ever thought about that? about that? Yeah. So, when you, you know, because this mannequin does pretty well. I mean, screams and cries. And if yeah. you act startled and you don't pick the baby up and kind of pat mm -hmm. it and handle it, then we can have the baby coo and be happy. So it kind of helps you get through that first awkward little piece of, oh my God, he's yeah. what am I going to do? What do I do to this child? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and actually, he's pretty heavy. Is it? Yeah. Is it like an eight-pounder? No, he's more than an eight-pounder. Because he has mechanics inside. So yeah. he, he's pretty, he's weighty. Nice. I love babies. I'm excited. Let's yeah, go. Babies. Tomorrow. Let's go. <laughs> Tomorrow. Let's yeah. Go. So that's a lot of hands-on already mm -hmm. in the program. What else have you guys done from at this point in your career that is that is hands-on that would be considered hands-on for the program? 
you, oh, go ahead. Do you mean in the program or just outside? Maybe leading up to it in the program. Anything and everything, yeah. Okay. Um, well, I think a lot of the courses that are introductory, which is basically what me and Cody have started to go through, um, are a lot more about like communication and learning how to be an effective communicator. We have to do lots of talking in front of the class and um, we just did like some little debate style talking in front of the class in my nursing informatics class. Um, but you love. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's so good. Um, <laughs> but no, um, and we talk a lot about just broadly, like you don't have to know super specifics, but we talk about laws and um, you guys will know the Institute of Medicine's report very well. Dr. Walker loves it. Um, but you'll talk about that, and that's very informative about just kind of how the health system works. Because um, I think we all have a general idea from, like, the patient side, because we've all been to a doctor at one time in our life, hopefully. Um, but I had never really thought about it from, like, a practicing side until I was in the nursing classes. So... Um, I think it's a lot about like getting you prepared mentally to deal with the hands-on stuff. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, prior to coming into this program, um, I worked a lot with children, um, so that would be definitely a benefit. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then um, I have a lot of friends who are doctors, and uh, I was able to see some of them practice and uh, discuss with some of them just some details about going into a profession. Um, then while I was in this, while I'm in this program, I'm still completing a class about um, intro to health professions. And it's just getting me um, into what it is to be a health professional and how to work with other health professions as well, which I think is very, very beneficial. Excellent. So let's, wait a minute. Let me, oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Because yeah, go really, ahead. Um, you bring up a good point because in reality, the Institute of Medicine's report, there we go. which we love, <laughs> we do. <laughs> but you're up in time. and that's linked in with Obamacare too, but communication is a causative factor in regards to a lot of the errors that occur within the medical uh, systems. So the communication superficially sounds, ooh, I know how to communicate, not a problem at all. But when you actually start to look at communication within patient scenarios, you realize there's much more to it. And if you don't close that loop of communication, major errors can take place and actually patients will be harmed because of the communication error. So it is, communication is really a big deal. So backing things up, uh, let's, let's look at things maybe through the start of a um, high school senior so mm -hmm. to speak. Um, they're moving into the program for the very first time. What, what is a student to expect walking right into the program? Uh, Cody, you can speak probably more <laughs> well, to this than I can. Um, right into the program, uh, you just take some intro classes and um, some basic requirements of the university. Mm -hmm. um, so right now I'm going through just some, um, what am I thinking? Psychology? Just, Gen yeah, psychology and Gen Ed. Gen, Gen Ed, yes, mm -hmm. that's, um, <laughs> escaped my mind for a second. Yeah, so it's some general education right now, um, but I am taking psychology and then intro to health professions. So they really get you from the very start um, right into the program. Um, so that's really what to expect going directly into it. Um, but before it, be prepared. Mm -hmm. Prepare yourself, because you may think that, oh, it'll be an easy start, but it's going to come, it's going to come faster than you think. So, yeah, yeah this semester went very fast. <laughs> Next semester is going to come and go very fast, and eventually I'll be a nurse, and I'll be like, what? What happened? Where did school go? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think me and Cody, I'm pretty sure Cody was a very good student in high school, mm -hmm. real yeah. high GPA, and I was the same way, and... When your teachers tell you that high school classes are different than college classes, believe them. I swear to you, they really are. Like, they're much more self-motivated. So if you aren't that great at it now, start to work on it because your own self-motivation and stopping yourself from procrastinating is going to make you a successful college student 
no matter what your major is, but especially in nursing. Yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. So one, one aspect to the application process is the direct admit portion. And for a high school senior, let's, let's break it down for them and tell them what that is. Okay, direct admission, you have certain criteria that you need to meet. Now, what does direct admission really mean? It means that you are guaranteed a seat. Now, there are, we really admit 30 students within the cohorts that go through the nursing program, but you're guaranteed a seat, but you still have to maintain a GPA, a minimal GPA of 3.0 if you are a direct admission. A direct admission has to have a high school GPA of 3.4 and an ACT of 23 or higher. And those are direct admit. You need to get that application in, especially now if you're a junior, okay, but if you're a senior in high school, those application needs to be in before, actually this is November already. We have, they have to be in by December. So really, if you've not done that, you need to really contact admissions office and do that now. Because if you're a direct admission, that does guarantee you a seat. You can come in as a general admission, but the general admission, it's like for instance this fall, we admitted, initially we admitted 25 students. Of those 25, nine were direct admits. So we really had still 21 additional seats. The numbers within the program are never static, they change because already that number is up to 29 because I've had change of majors within those people coming from other majors into nursing. So still, if those nine direct admissions maintain their GPA, they're guaranteed a seat and then the other seats are competitive admission and it's based on GPA. But you have to have a minimum GPA of 3.0 for official admission into the nursing major. And it's a minimum, At the University of Finley, I should say. It's a minimum of 3.0 with your science courses too. Oh right? yeah, you have to watch the sciences because we have chemistry the first semester of the freshman. Chemistry, the, the biology, biology, and then AMP, AMP um, <laughs> one, and of course AMP two. Mm -hmm. AMP can be challenging. Um, the more opportunity you have in high school of taking sciences and biology and maybe anatomy and physiology I think really prepares you better in order to face those classes at the college level because as you can attest to them they are they're challenging they are challenging they go quickly I took an anatomy course in high school my senior year just because I had some space to fill um, and that was probably the best decision I ever made because I went into, it doesn't tell you everything, it's not like you're repeating your high school anatomy course. It obviously goes into much more detail, but um, having that base makes learning the college level anatomy so much easier. So if you have the opportunity, take one. And probably shadowing. Shadowing If you're is able to get too. in and shadow a nurse as well, follow oh, yeah. a nurse around for yeah. a day, yeah. My mm -hmm. Grammy was a nurse for 35 years, so that is how I like shadowed it wasn't official but I uh, went into work with her on many an occasion when it was allowed so if you have some sort of opportunity you have a friend or a family member who happens to be in any sort of health profession and you can kind of get in to some sort of clinical setting in high school I would do it too. The only thing you have to keep in mind is when you're shadowing that's a really narrow a bird's eye view of the area of the tremendous scope of practice because there's the scope and breadth of practice in different areas of nursing is huge in reality. It goes anywhere from community settings to clinics to acute care systems into the critical care areas and they're all different. Every area is a little bit different mm -hmm. and they're looked up on the thought processes are different. Um, and then it gives you a large variety in which to practice too. All right. <laughs> so real quick reminder, you guys can ask all of your questions in the little chat box that is below the video you guys are watching. Um, otherwise, you can go out to Twitter. Our handle is at UFinley, and you can use that hashtag AskUF, and you can ask all of your questions there. So let's jump into uh, some questions that we usually get that are based around the nursing program. Um, just a, a very general question is, you know, 
these these programs are getting very specific and you're going into a very specific field once you are all said and done is the program looking for something very specific in a student even before they get to start in the program i'll start okay. with that one because <laughs> i think i'm looking for a student who knows how to study um, and sometimes I'll even ask that question as potential students will come in. Mm -hmm. Have you really had to study in high school? And that answer really varies. Some of them feel like they've really not been challenged greatly. So they've really not had to study very hard at all. So find out how you study. Know how you study best, how you learn best. Because if you come in with that, then in essence, I think you have a good foundation on which to build. But if you come in lacking that, you're going to have to build that foundation before you can progress through any curriculum because you need to know how to study and how you learn best. Then you guys can add to that. Okay. You want to go? <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah, personally, um, in high school, studying was not a uh, main priority, unfortunately. And uh, <laughs> I've definitely had to learn over this semester how to study um, appropriately. and. Um, it's been a challenge, but uh, if you can, in high school, learn how to study before coming to college, it'll be a lot easier and it'll be a lot more beneficial. Um, but I do know from experience that um, you'll figure your way out one way or another, because <laughs> it's either that or you can't. <laughs> so, yep. yeah. Um, I would say, I will going to come at this question from a personality perspective, so I'm going to do that. Um, <laughs> As you can probably tell, me and Cody are pretty um, friendly, outgoing people, um, which is not a requirement by any means. <laughs> but, <laughs> It'd be beneficial. <laughs> I mean, if you like to talk to people, then you're already on the right track. Um, I think that a large part of nursing is being able to deal with a variety of personalities and patients. Um, so I would just be prepared to work hard, like Cody said, like figure out how you study best and like and it doesn't always have to be like you take notes because I'm not a note-taking person uh, personally I like to listen and I like to do things hands-on which is great with this program because there's lots of hands-on but um, I know that some people in our class will write notes for days and that works for them um, I will like record lectures and then listen to them back because that's how I learn best if you're a hands-on person, I don't know, draw yourself a picture in anatomy and learn the balance. I don't know what you do. But um, I would just say know yourself. And if you don't yet, then use senior, junior and senior year to kind of figure out your best ways when it's still, high school is very important, but it's not at the same level as college work. So use your high school courses to kind of figure out how you do that best. Good advice. So as a, as a nursing student, can I also play a sport is another question we usually get. Okay. Um, Cody and I are not athletic people. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> can't speak from experience. But we, I would say, are both very active students in the community. Um, personally, I do stride on campus, which is like a club. I'm the president of that right now. I'm in nursing association. I do, um, I'm a psychology research assistant um, for child development. I do SciCi, which is like an honor society for psychology. Um, I'm in choir, I do theater stuff. So there's definitely room in your schedule to do whatever kind of activities you enjoy, um, as long as you're good at studying and you can time manage. And what, what is Stride? Strata is students teaching respect for individuals with disabilities every day, which you can join as a nursing <laughs> student when you come here. I will welcome you with open arms. <laughs> there are students within the program who are playing in many sports, but just as Caitlin said, the thing is, the curriculum can be challenging, and that will help you as long as you are organized. Um, and a good time manager, you can do that. I've seen it managed all the way through a nursing curriculum, but I've also seen people, they get so far within the curriculum and then they're going to make a decision as to, can I still maintain that sport? 
it's really an individual decision on how you manage your time and um, are you capable of doing both. But I've seen both sides of it. The other thing, too, that I was going to mention, I have like a at least 20 hour week job, too. Um, so it definitely is possible if you, for whatever reason, want or need to make money while you're in college to um, be at a job that is at least 20 hours a week and still get everything you need to get done done. It's all about time management. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Also, the coaches work, too, because I've had a coach call me up and suggest that one of the students drop a course in order to maintain keep their GPA really high. I mean, so the coaches are as conscientious in regards to that student's um, success in the curriculum as any other faculty member. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they want you on the field or the court or in the water just as much as you want them sitting in that classroom right. too. Yeah, absolutely. There's also a lot of resources at the University of Finley in yes. order to help you be successful. Um, there's all kinds of tutoring that's available, uh, time management, so all those resources are actually on campus as well. Mm -hmm. But please, 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 please ask. Mm -hmm. You know, because I think the major problem that I see a student within a semester, a semester is, can be anywhere from 15 to 16 weeks. If you have an issue, early intervention, you know, ask early on in the first couple of weeks of the semester, but so if you wait too long, the 13th or 14th week of that semester, and then plan on seeking help, you can see that that's, pretty, that's too late within the semester to seek help. So seek help early on. Help is there, it's available, you know. Don't not ask for help. Your professors and if you play a sport, your coaches, if you're in any sort of like activity, anyone who's like on campus, I think, and in my experience, has always been they truly want you to succeed in whatever you're doing. So don't be afraid to ask for help. I know, like, a lot of times in high school, I was like embarrassed to ask for help because I was like the smart kid, so I should be able to do it by myself. But I mean, it's really not looked down upon at all. Just to be honest and be like, I need help with learning how to time manage or um, juggling this sport in this class. As long as you ask, there's someone who can help you. Sure. And the one thing I really appreciate is there's free tutoring mm -hmm. on campus mm -hmm. um, in chemistry and any subject that you want. Basically, yeah, basically they will find you yeah, a tutor. They will find you yeah. a tutor. Yeah, and it's all free. So mm -hmm. that is very, very nice. And on the reverse, you can actually become a tutor okay. later. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, so if something you got, yeah. you got <laughs> yeah, if you got tutored in something, you can turn that around. If they see that you have success in that area, mm -hmm. yeah, you can get paid to help somebody else who was in your shoes at one point. My roommate makes very good money doing that right now. <laughs> see, there you go. Uh, some of the questions we get are about the College Credit Plus, which at one point was called post secondary or dual degree. And I just want to know if Finley accepts any College Credit Plus credits. They did for me. <laughs> they did for me as well. Yay! <laughs> um, I brought in personally and ended up translating into 15 credit hours. So basically, now I've had like a semester's worth of credits to just kind of play around with. So I've picked up a couple minors because I have time to, and it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I picked up about. I think 18 credit hours, um, which cut out just, I mean, it was, it was about, I think, three of my required classes, um, if I'm correct. Um, and that opened up some extra classes that I desire to take or I would like to take for a future, um, for future master's degree as a physician assistant or nurse practitioner. Um, so that was very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Yes, they do. Yes, we do. Yes. <laughs> So if a student applies to the nursing program and they're looking to be a part of that direct admit list, but they don't get on the direct admit list, what, what does that mean? Um, you can still apply. Like I gave the example for this past fall, which I think is a pretty good example. Um, we admitted 25. <clears throat> So nine of them were direct admits. We still will accept 30 into the major. 
official acceptance into the major is really the second semester of the second year. So students will apply. Actually, they're in the process. The sophomore yep, group right <laughs> is in the process of applying for official acceptance into the nursing major. So GPA, uh, minimal GPA 3.0. Uh, direct admissions will have that seat as long as they maintain it. But the other students who have, like this, the first cohort, actually there were no direct admissions uh, applications. So this entire first class is all, they were routine admitted to the University of Finney was general admissions. Mm -hmm. So there's not one direct admission. So they're all in the process of applying for those 30 seats. And our number has changed, as we said, mm -hmm. According to the stats, and you probably know them better than I do, in some instances, <laughs> um, students will change your major three times yeah. or more during your college career. So that means the numbers are really, the numbers will change. From this week, they can be one, two weeks from now, the numbers could be different. At one point, we started with 15 in your cohort, mm -hmm. and 15 students were actually there the first day in fall semester of 14. Mm -hmm. And by the end of that, well, the spring of 15, we had 33. Um, and at one point, we were up to 36. Yeah. 36 majors who were seeking admission into the major. Mm -hmm. So we started this fall. Numbers always change. People will change their mind. They will move away. Um, more people will want to come in. So we started this semester with 32. Mm -hmm. And right now we have 31. 31. And I was one of those people that transferred majors, so don't be afraid to change your major. Yeah. I swear, it's okay. <laughs> but if you do, change to nursing. <laughs> there you go. There you yeah. go. <laughs> so that was actually my last question. Uh, so wrapping things up here, um, you can continue to ask your questions on Twitter. We will still monitor that, and we will get an answer to you. Uh, if you're not watching this live, we'll get an answer to you eventually. Um, our handle is at uFinley, and you can use the hashtag AskUF with all of your questions. So guys, wrapping things up, maybe doing uh, final thoughts for a high school student. Um, maybe if there's anything that a high school student needs to prepare for or something they they should know that you guys are now aware of what are what are some final thoughts that you want to throw out there <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that you need to have at least a like if not a love of science if you're gonna do nursing I guess I personally didn't realize how many different sciences go into nursing. There's biology, there's chemistry, um, there's some physical sciences. I take psychology, which I know most people may not consider that like a science. That's not the first thing that pops into your head, but um, that's all interconnected. So um, love science, or at least like it and tolerate it. <laughs> um, math is important. I swear it's important. <laughs> um, be able to communicate. You'll learn how if you don't, if you're not the best at it right now, because believe it or not, I was the shyest kid ever in high school, and now we're here. So, um, and know your study style. That's important too, which we already talked about. So, right. and I agree with uh, communication and being um, sociable that. Um, it is definitely something that can be learned. Um, personally, I was a very antisocial kid, um, but then I made a decision that I needed to start talking to people and I figured out how. Um, I think that's very important for a nursing major. Coming into this, definitely be prepared, like the math and sciences, mm -hmm. um, or at least be able to tolerate them. Know how to be disciplined or learn how to be disciplined um, and be prepared for a really awesome career. Great. All right, so for those of you that joined us, thank you. From Euler Nation, we will talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.